Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends and another nice auction set we have Somebody here. Somebody donated a watermelon <laughs> that we are auctioning off to you. Do you think it'll still be good in September? I don't know much about watermelons, as we'll find out throughout I'm the show. I'm not so sure that we <laughs> want to wait until September for this, but you definitely want to see what we're going to do with this because it has to do with a special holiday that's taking place this week oh, in August. Wow. August is awesome, isn't it? Football's coming up again and the temperatures will get below 90 yeah. and the humidity will go down. My favorite month, I think, is September just because, you know, fall is in the air. It's just a well, great that's time. Let's not rush us to September yet. Well, okay. August is coming. Back to school is happening. Sports practices have started. The Allen County Fair is taking place in August. That's right. It's a great fair. Um, all kinds of things. One of the best fairs in the nation as far as county fairs go. That, I've it's heard that. Huge. Yes. We went to supposedly the best one in Indiana. Uh, a week or two ago, and I was like, this is the biggest you got? Mm -hmm. Not when we have the Allen County Fair, so we'll look forward to that at the end of the month. Several summer concerts taking place in August. We'll tell you about those, too. But did you know, did you know? I, I found out yesterday, I think, or August two days ago. August 3rd is National Watermelon Day. So I brought a watermelon, and I did a really quick search on the Internet of how to cut neat shapes out of watermelon, which weird. basically means I didn't read any of the blog, and I just looked at the pictures. But I think I'm an expert. So today, you and I are going to try to turn this watermelon into a like whale or something. We're looking at a beluga, a great white. Uh, I'm not quite that advanced yet, <laughs> but I, I believe that you might be able to to do it. So we just go like. So between the, be. I claim this be, watermelon in the name of Spain. Between a spot on the porch.net has this great pictorial. What's it called? Tutorial. What's it called? Between a spot on Between the porch? a spot on the port dot, dot net. What does that mean? Is where I learned everything I ever needed to know about carving watermelons. I have no experience, <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's like a uh, it's like a Holiday Inn Express. You stay there <laughs> once and you're an expert. <laughs> so today, I'm going to teach Andy yes. how to carve this watermelon. Yes. Are you I'm, excited? I'm very excited to find out because you've done it from memory. And so should I start? Should I? I think you can. Now, I've, I have cut oh. a, a picture of what I think the, the fish would look picture. like. I've drawn a picture. Yes, I haven't cut anything yet. So as we start this, you might want to use this one. How deep do I have one. to go here? You might want to use this one is really good for. Oh, um, you're better at this than a, I am already. This is a really good knife for um, carving out rinds. So you might want to try this one. Yeah, this one gets Yeah, stuck. now you're like, uh, ah, goodness Did I spray you? <laughs> here, use this one instead. There we go. Here, now this is better. It's juicy. All right. Juicy. All right, as he starts cutting that, once you get that done, then we got to get this part out. I will let you know what's coming up today on Faith and Friends in addition to cutting this watermelon, which, what else is there? I'm going as fast as I can. <laughs> All right, free summer concerts coming up. We're going to tell you about a few of those that are taking place later on this month. One, a couple of them are this coming week. Also, an impacting interview with Carmela Wyant voice behind the Money Birds Act. Carmela suffered a tragedy she wants no parent to ever have to face. You don't want to miss her story. Also, kids and summer activities and technology. Are your kids spending too much time looking at their screens? We've got a health story for you coming up on that. But first, Andy, how about if I take over? All right, I've almost got it through. And you read our scripture, which is a very well-known scripture verse at this so, point. Final look at the 2016 Faith Challenge key verse before next week we will start our 2016 election prayer chain that you can be a part of. You don't have to open a letter and send it on to somebody else like the old uh, <laughs> mail chains, but you can be a part of our, our TV prayer chain. So let's relive it once again. Hopefully it's made such a huge impact on you as it has on us. Second Peter chapter one, verses three through seven is Jennifer's Tasting and seeing that the watermelon is good, maybe. It's good salt, for carving. Better. Okay. I'm not so sure this is the best. It's not really watermelon. True watermelon. It's season not watermelon. Yet. Watermelon. Is season. it a hybrid? Oh. Watermelon season. All right, let's get to our scripture. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second Peter one three through seven, which includes those passages you've heard us say so many times from verses five through seven. But we'll start in verse three, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, fruitful growth in the faith. But also for this very reason, 
giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness love. That verse is like a watermelon. Not really. Like a watermelon. I was waiting for you to I was trying to think of something where we could, should I pull this out or not? Yeah, yeah, pull that out. It does build upon, you know, each verse as we talked about so often. I'm not going to eat it because I don't like watermelon. Andy Lynch does not like watermelon. How many of you at home? I didn't even know it was possible to not like watermelon. It just it doesn't do anything for me. It's, it's average, as we would say in our It's household. not the best watermelon. But I'm that, not going to tell you where I got it. Don't worry. It's no local grower, nothing like that. But it's really not the best watermelon. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. Your next step, Andy, you got to get the rest of this fin out here. And then you need to start scooping the watermelon out, the flesh the out. Which part's the flesh? That would be the red part. So this, uh, this has a point to life in the making, the flesh. The Taking flesh. off the flesh and embracing the spirit or something. So you're going to scoop this out, and then we're going to carve out the eyes and but the first smile. first got to take the tail off, right? Well, don't make sure the tail stays. Just oh, take off oh, that this side. Part. This really is easier than I thought. So maybe you want to carve your own watermelon and pack it up this coming weekend when you head out to Rock the Lake. Ah, oh, Rock the Lake. So I'm, I'm getting the red part out. There you go, red part out. That's what you want to do. But you have to carve back over here too, I think. I remember, I am expert carver here. I remember. Rock the Lake is a two-day worship and ministry event at Indian Lake, and it's sponsored by Shine FM Christian Radio. It's a great family-friendly event. Admission cost is free. Free! Free. It starts on Saturday, August 6th. From 1 to 4.30, enjoy local music on the grand rental stage. Then the national headliners start at 5 p.m. with an incredible concert lineup we are messengers, Mariah Peter, seventh time down, speaker Tom Henderson, and then the headlighter, Crowder. You know, I saw Crowder. Love Crowder. Cup. Sorry. Uh, well, we just made a mess of our carpet. I had, people were probably going to eat that. Oh, my bad. Which one was it? <laughs> Here's some video of Crowder in concert about uh, three years ago when I saw him in Texas. And you know, I can still remember what sitting, I was about five rows from the front, and I had been in a conference all day, listened to all kinds of speakers. Here comes Crowder, who to be honest looked a little strange with his long beard and his uh, interesting clothes, but his gospel message was phenomenal. Man, wow, could he preach, and I'm excited to have him come in to this area. He was in Fort Wayne not too long ago. They did something at the Tin Cap Stadium uh, with Jeremy Camp, Crowder, and Somebody else. Casting Crowns, I think, was there. Oh, that would have been great. And there was a question and answer session with Crowder before, and he was with his band still, David Crowder Band. But I agree. He was just so down to earth and just embraced his faith. He's not just a showman that's, you know, speaking one thing but living mm -hmm. a different, different way. Uh, just very genuine about his relationship with Jesus, which I appreciated. Very quiet spoken, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. He did tell a story when I saw him in Texas about how he uh, had lost um, a pencil and then he later found it in his beard. <laughs> I think I remember that story too. He has a very long beard, in case you haven't noticed. Well, Rock the Lake concert, you can see him firsthand. It's this coming weekend. It's at the Old Field Beach at Indian Lake State Park. Just bring a blanket and a long chair and come out for this time of corporate worship. But that is not all. It continues into Sunday with a triathlon starting at 7.30 a.m. Art at the beach also takes place on Sunday. There's a community church service at 11 a.m. And we are messengers will be leading the praise and worship with Tom Henderson speaking. And then there's more local music on the grand rental stage Sunday through 4 p.m. What a great location in Indian Lake State Park. Such an incredible weekend of Christ-focused activities for the whole family. Learn more by visiting rockthelake.com or contact our friends at the radio station Shine FM. They're located in Bell Fountain. Their website is shinefm.com. Ohio.com. So, how, what do you think? You're moving along pretty what quickly on this. What do I need to do this. still? I feel like I've dug it out. Okay, so is this is enough? what we've got right now. We have a hollowed out. That looks like a whale. Whale. We've got a fin, but. Oh, he's we smiling. We need some eyes. So when, I, I do recall oh. this very important thing when I when I read when I when I looked at the pictures on the blog post. Because <laughs> you uh, didn't read the blog post. <laughs> I read I read this much to know this much. So when you carve the eyes, you mm. want to carve all the way through. Okay. But when you carve the smile, yeah. you don't want to carve all the way through because you want to keep the red in there to be like his mouth. Huh. Okay. Okay. We'll do the All right, first. he's working on that. Well, if you have children or grandchildren at home this summer, here's a question to ponder. Do they need to get to Indian Lake this weekend or any other outdoor activities because they've been spending too much time sitting in front of their TV or maybe more likely too much 
time with their nose in front of their phones or other technology? One eye. One eye. All right. Well, in today's Lost Creek Care Center Health segment, Clark Powell takes a look at ways to help technology addicted teens learn to balance, which is a key to better health. What's that? As a mother of six children ages 7 to 29, Don Heron has dealt for decades with the same issue. With their older kids, it was watching too much TV. Now, after school, they come home and to them, downtime is hopping on, you know, a tablet. And if it's a battle during the school year, skirmishes over screen time in the summertime can be all out war. Kids will be out of their routine and it could be really easy for families to fall into the trap of kids just wanting to be on their screen. So Dr. Jean Morjani of Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children in Orlando has some tips. First, she says, don't set time limits just to set them. It's not just the amount of time a child spends on a screen. We have to actually look at the context of what they're doing with those screens. Not all screen time is bad. There are some 80,000 educational apps that can help children maintain things like reading and math skills over the summer. But make sure you set up media free zones in your house, something the Herons insist on. No screen in the bed, um, no screens at dinner time. Um, screens are off when we say they're off. Um, and you know, if we ever have company over, uh, the screens are off as well. Finally, if you don't want your kids to sit and look at a screen all day, give them something to do. A little planning now can go a long way for months to come. I keep them busy, and I think that's part of the key is to keep them exhausted, so to speak. Um, so they're, um, they do sports and camps. You can also set weekly goals like riding a bike so many miles or organizing backyard basketball tournaments because the more they do this, the less they do this. Even though kids may not act like it, they actually crave and they need those limits. At Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children in Orlando, this is Clark Powell reporting. Carmela Wyatt joins me now and uh, Carmela has a, a tough story to tell and um, I'm very thankful that you are here to share it. I know it brings up a lot of painful memories but can spare a lot of families some really kind of unnecessary grief. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So we have um, some pictures and a quilt here that have special significance. Um, the pictures are of your son David and um, and the quilt was something you made for him and is for his high school graduation, right? Yes. Okay, so tell us about David and tell us how you got to be here. Um, David loves sports, especially baseball. He was a very, very great pitcher and played first and third base. And uh, matter of fact, Wednesday night he had stopped over at the house and put his arms around me and he said, Mom, I'm gonna make yours and Grandpa's dream come true. And I laughed and said, uh-oh, which one is this? And oh, yeah. He said, I spoke with the Clippers and he said, I'm heading down next week to speak to the Reds. And he says, I am going to make the Reds. I'm telling you now, I am going to play. And I said, David, anything I can do for you, I will do whatever it takes because this has always been your dream. Mm -hmm. It's always been in your heart to play baseball. So." Go for it, uh -huh. you know, do your dreams. And that next Monday, um, it's okay. mom's worst nightmare. His fiance had called and told me that he had been in an accident, but she didn't know anything else about it. So um, I ended up calling the dispatch and they gave me the hospital number and told me which hospital. So I in turn called the hospital and I said, is David money at this hospital? And the lady that answered said, can you hold on? And so she put me to somebody else and I really thought I might've been talking to a doctor or somebody of that nature and um, found out later it was the hospital chaplain and I said, is David money at this hospital? And he said, yes, he is. And I said, we will be there in 40 minutes. And he said, ma'am, ma'am, just take your time, don't rush. And I said, I'm not going to. I said, we will be there in 40 minutes. And he in turn ended up telling me over the phone that David was dead. He did not even know who I was, did not ask any questions, are you home alone, are you driving? 
And I think to myself, what would have happened if I had been driving? Cry. If my husband wouldn't have been home, I would have taken off in my car. I wouldn't have known where I was going, but I would have taken off and headed towards Columbus. Right. <sighs> no one ever should have to hear that. And what he took away from me of not being able to be with David. Mm -hmm. I'll never have that back. I'll never get that. The sergeant, now he's a major for Franklin County Sheriff Department. He was on David's case. I couldn't have asked for a better police officer. He's our angel. Yeah. He has been so good to me and my family, and I truly appreciate him. And because of him, I got a law passed in memory of David to add two emergency contacts with our driver's license. This way, if there is ever an accident or a medical emergency and you are signed up, the police will know who to notify instead of having to hear it the way I heard it. Yes. And I think that is something that we take for granted, yes. that that would be the process, but it's, it's not then. No, no, it's very, very hard for police to find family. Almost all the police officers that I have ever spoke with said 85% of the time they have to go back to your place of employment to get the next of kin. Because every place you go where you work, go to school, go to the doctors, you put next to kin on everything. And so most of the time they have to go back to your place of employment to get your next of kin. Wow. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I miss him. I'm sure you do. And um, I'm sure this is not what he wanted. Um, <laughs> and, but I'm sure he's very proud of you for taking um, your pain and using it for good for others. Thank to you. spare them. Um, so looking ahead for us um, in the community across Ohio, is this a national law? No, I tried to get it to be that, but with the Fifth Amendment, if a state doesn't want to do it, they don't have to. Um, there are probably like 12 other states that are doing it now. It's in Illinois, Indiana, Colorado, uh, Maryland, New Jersey. Um, this lady found David's story on the internet in New Jersey. And Betty had found out somewhat the same way I did about her about daughter. Her. Mm -hmm. And she got the law passed in Sarah's name in New Jersey to add the next to kin with our driver's license. So what do we do then? What, what um, when it's, we go to renew our driver's license, that is something that we need to vocally say to them or will they ask us? They are supposed to ask you. They are supposed to say, you can now sign up for the next of kin and they will give you a form. And you can fill out the form right then and there and hand it back to them. Or you can take it home and mail it in yourself. And also you can go on to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles website and just go into the search and type in next of kin and it will come up and you can just do it right online. It takes maybe two minutes to put it online. Okay. And then I talked to a police officer um, a couple weeks ago and he said that it has helped him over and over of contacting family and being able to get the family to the hospital because some people have allergies, some people have heart conditions and different things and um, he said it has really helped them and then I was speaking with a state patrolman and she said that another thing is once you submit it, if your address is changed, oh. you need to go back in. Yeah, yeah, or phone numbers or yes. anything like that, yeah. And go back in and then submit the new address and the new telephone number. I mean, it is so easy to do. You just go in, you type in your, the contacts that you want, submit it and you're done. 
So we can do this now, even though we're ne we've already maybe are in the middle of our four-year window yes. or whatever. Okay, we can go in at any time. And any time. Yes, okay. it does not matter. I mean, it do you don't have to wait until your license are renewed. Yeah. You can just please do it. Do it for your families. Do it for your loved ones. And what do we what do we ask for? What is it? How do we specifically ask for this? Just next of kin notification. That's how we could yes. pose the question. Yes. Okay. And if you go to my son's website, which is money-burge.com, um, if you go to his website and click on sign up now, it will take you directly to the website. It does, okay. Yes. All right, that's good to know. Well, I'm sure that your son, David Christopher Money, would be very proud of his mom and Thank um, you. and stepping out in faith and um, coming on shows like ours and, and getting the word out. And um, I wish you, I wish you peace. Thank you. And God has just amazed me on many, many things. The people that I've got to meet, the people I've spoke with. I'm and sure. When I was going to the state house, I, I was just, I, I was physically tired and physically just emotionally drained. Yeah. And I have this, my stepdaughter made this beautiful collage of David. And I was like, I'm done. I, I'm just, I'm done doing this. I, I just yeah. can't do it anymore. And I walked in the house and I looked straight at his picture. And it was like, he said, Mom, don't you ever quit oh. and don't you ever give up please don't ever stop this and it was just like I don't know there was just something that came over me and I just said you're right David I can't I can't do it because of because of you and what they did to me yeah well God bless you God thank bless you your heart and thank you for joining us today thank you the time is now to bring your donations to TV44. We're gearing up for this year's auction, and we need your items now to make it a success. Furniture, collectibles, antiques, tools, vehicles, mowers, anything of value. Drop-offs accepted Monday through Thursday, 10 till 3. Call for Friday hours, 419-339-4444. Donate your items now to the TV44 auction. So we're back and our fish is taking shape. I just need to do the smile, right? That's There's right. a picture of Jennifer. Hey, you can just hang it right on the wall like this Reminds and I can me just of sit there pages. all the time. So I'm cutting the smile, huh? So this is an item that'll be available for the auction, which is pretty incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture frame. Of course, this table is available for the auction. This is uh, just one of a four set of some really, really nice um, dishes, square dishes. This nightstand over here was donated by Lynn Lehman, just beautiful piece. Back here we've got an FDR style um, wheelchair. FDR style. Huh? In weeks to come, we'll make sure you That's can see that a little closer. Is it, just, it working? It just it looks just like, like a rocket. It is working okay. and uh, Abby tried it out in the parking lot and we'll oh. tell you that. I'm thinking in the coming week, I've got this idea of a bike race we might be doing and we might put the wheelchair in there. Okay. We'll see. So how are you doing here? And I, I will offer my services too if anyone would like to bid on them as a watermelon <laughs> cutter. I will come to your house and cut your watermelon into a shape that Jennifer finds by pictures only on the internet. I have to tell you this website that that we found. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Has what is a it? Lot a spot on the porch.com or something? A lot of other really good ideas. So maybe we'll have to make this a you know weekly I feel like trend. Such an artist. This could be a new yeah. This could be a new hobby for you. I'm terrible at art. I'm very not good with my. Andy, hands. you're not terrible. The first thing is you have to be positive. You have to speak positively about your Mr. skills. Mr. Tenace in kindergarten art class never told me that. Maybe I was set off on the wrong foot. Uh, that that's that. I hate to admit, but there's been a lot of adults who have said negative things to kids, and it's ruined them. <laughs> This is your. He's a good art teacher, though. I don't want to throw Mr. Tenace. What do you monster. think, guys? Do you th do you think at home that he is a good carver? I hear them clapping. Oh, yeah. They're clapping at home. Woohoo! <laughs> well, okay. I'm so trying to keep the red on the smile. That's what you're doing. We may not have a 
whole car of watermelon at the auction, but maybe we will. Like but we will have a lot of other items, and you can visit WTLW.com regularly to view our updated pictures of our donated items. And we have some exciting drop-off news for you. Our offices will be back open on Fridays starting in August, which means this week you can bring your adoption donations Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Please call ahead for any other drop-off days or times. It also helps for you to call ahead if you're going to need several people to help unload because we don't always have a huge staff here. Boom! Well, look at that. He's smiling at the camera. <laughs> Auction is September 10th. Can Bring your auction table donations. Is this, is this table an auction then. donation? This I table is an auction donation. But you know what? It's designed so that it can take the mess and clean it up. Is it done or is there more to it? I think that's it. Wow. Now it. you could now you can have like melon balls and things and you could fill it up with. You can take the little melon baller, the round. Like the cafeteria thing. style scoop. No, or well, kind of, but maybe smaller. mashed potatoes? Just talk to Leah. She probably knows about this. She probably this. does have a melon You can molar. get cantaloupe and muskmelon, and you could take the watermelon, and then you fill it all up. So now this is the bowl. Hmm. You would be, people would be very impressed if you showed up an event with this filled with fruit. My rich mahogany furniture. <laughs> Books. <laughs> Hey, something else you can expect to find at the auction. Concert tickets and lots of concert tickets is something we always have. These are always popular, but before the auction, which is September 10th, there are some great free concert opportunities coming in August. You can refer to this month's Take One newsletter to see the Gospel Music Tent uh, Fair for the Allen County Fair. Just pay to get into the fair. The Gospel Entertainment has no additional cost. The Auglaise County Fair is going on this week, and yeah. it also has an incredible lineup of great musical groups. Sunday, Legacy 5. Monday, the Jim Brady Trio. Tuesday, the Triumphant Quartet. Wednesday, the Isaacs. Thursday, the Browns. Friday, Sold Out Quartet. And in the Grandstand, New Song. And Saturday, Guy Penrod. All right. See more information at auglaisecountyfair.org. And that's not all. August the 20th, Wayne Stock is back in St. Mary's. Going to be an absolutely incredible event. More than 10,000 people they're expecting. Much more information coming in the next couple weeks. And then the day after, August 21st, is the Urge Back to School event. It's in Ada. Also have the Night of Hope, an outdoor event to raise awareness about heroin. That's in Salina. You can go to WTLW.com events page to learn more about all these great events, many of which are free of charge. That's right. For the and the fair ones, you do have to pay to get in the fair, but that's at no additional costs. So it's a low-cost family getaway. All right. Our summer computer graphics campaign continues. You, our faithful friends, are fueling it. We're so thankful. We're getting close to $15,000. We aren't quite there yet, but we're getting closer. Certainly very thankful. Thankful for this $50 donation from Lima. And she says, TV44 is the best any time of the day or night. Thank you. We appreciate and we agree with you. $200 from Findlay. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. $22 coming to us from Geneva. Oh, cool. You know, God knows the dollar amount. It doesn't matter whether it's small or large when it looks like earthly standards. It is all large in God's standards when it comes from our heart. And there's still plenty of time to donate to this project. You can go online, you can donate in person, you can mail your donation or call us over the phone. There you see all the information on your screen. Thank you so much for being a blessing to us. All right. Well, we finished well ahead of time with the water. We though. have. I'm very impressed. This was faster than I expected. So that means either number one, it's easy, or number two, you're really good at this. Well, we know it's not the second one. Oh. So it's got to be the first one. But we forgot, I just realized we don't have a, like a blowhole that comes out of the top of the whale. How's he going to breathe? Mm. We can't put it in his tail. I'll put it on the side. He's got to be able to breathe, right? We'll put little gills in those right. enamel, as, as Chase he, Getz told as, us. As, he, as, as, as Andy spears our whale, well, one final ah, time, sorry. we'll leave you with our 2016 Faith Challenge verse, which we've been sharing with you since January. We're going to start actually a couple verses before because context is a good thing. I agree. Second Peter chapter 1, we'll start in verse 3, go to verse 7, which includes those passages you've heard so many times, verses 5 through 7. Verse 3 says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you, the partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust, 
But also, this, for this very reason, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. I encourage you to continue to reflect on those things as we have for the first seven months of the year and, and hopefully can continue to as the living picture <laughs> Andy's comes being into serious frame. and I'm over here not being serious, but you should always be serious when it comes to the scriptures. Very important. Goodbye. That's it. <laughs>